You may not know it, but there's a law in California. You can't throw anything electronic, like a computer or a TV, in the trash anymore. So for thousands of old or broken monitors, desktops, or laptops, places like this recycling center in Sunnyvale, California, are the end of the line. And to the center's director, Stephen Wyatt, that line's growing out of control. There must be thousands and thousands of computers here, and yet, in terms of collectible or recyclable computers, this is the tip of the iceberg. This is just the tip of the iceberg, yes. Does that worry you? Does it worry me? Uh, electronic waste is growing three times faster than solid waste. That's a lot of electronic trash, so much, it's got its own name called e-waste. As a matter of fact, let's talk about televisions. Right now, if you were to retire every television, you could cover the island of Manhattan in New York City, uh, probably about 40 feet high. California funds dozens of recycling centers where people drive up and drop off their e-waste. It's not free. You pay for it. Every time you buy a new gadget or monitor, you pay a recycling fee of five to 10 bucks. We need to have industrial infrastructure to properly handle this material. It's out of the scope of uh, one organization to deal with this. We need policy. Brian Hamlin writes an e-waste blog, an online chronicle about e-waste issues and why private industry needs to get into the Recycling Act. I think uh, industry has shown amazing ingenuity when they put their will to it. And when so they, if the money is there then? That's right, if the money is there. So we need to make a system where there is money available and they can apply the same engineering brilliance that they used to create these products to reclaim them at the end of life. The answer is simple. The answer is bring it back where you got it. And I think we have to embrace what we call the extended producer responsibility. We have to have manufacturers involved. We have to have retail stores involved. And they have to take ownership of that responsibility. The Industrial Revolution needs to finally mature and close the loop on how the material goes out and how it comes back in. Local government agrees that the people who make e-products should be responsible for e-waste. You cannot be left to government because all that does is produce problems as it relates to perceived taxes, perceived fees. When you think about it in a large picture, a big picture of recycling, who knows best but the manufacturer on how to manage those constituents of that product. So, is this an example of one that's just been delivered? This is an example of one that just came in. All right, and... Uh, and we know that this one right here is not going to be reusable. You can't reuse it. Can't reuse it. It's Why? too old. E-waste amounts to wires, plastics, and metals that might contaminate or pollute. So what are you going to do with it? So what we're going to do is, is we're going to dismantle it for the constituent parts. We're going to take it apart. We're going to get the boards out separately. We're going to get the hard drive out, mm -hmm. which can be shredded to protect somebody's data. And we're going to take the metal case, you know, because the metal case will also be chewed mm -hmm. up and that'll be recycled. If the motherboard is gone and we can't replace it, well, then we know we just trash the we tear it down for parts. Jolene Lyons tests out memory and motherboards to see if they still work. She's a retired psychotherapist who used to help straighten out human brains. <laughs> now I'm on computer brains. Jolene's a volunteer. Everything she learned about how to test or repair a computer, she learned on the job. I'd always been interested in computers, but didn't know what to do or how to do it or anything. And so I happened to meet one of the instructors down here, uh, Jack Burke, and, uh, and he was telling me I had some questions about computers, and he answered the question. I was so impressed and in awe that I asked what he did, and he told me, and, and then I wanted to know, well, do you accept women, older women, and who um, no experience? Yes, come on down. So I. Got, a, got courage up and in a couple weeks I came down and, and, and he, they taught me everything I know. Think of what I'm getting. I'm getting hands-on experience. I'm being taught by some of the greatest people who've worked for some of the greatest companies. That's my pay and, and the fun of doing it. What Jolene and other volunteers do is try to save old e-ware. If it works, the center donates it to schools or nonprofit programs but many are still too far gone. For instance, 
When laptops break, they're often too hard to fix. Laptops are very difficult to repair, and there aren't good standards for reuse of the parts. So we're creating these laptops at a very uh, high rate, but what do you do with them? How do you fix them? What do you do with them when they're when you, time to dispose? So we found ourselves at a place where we are throwing away products, and that's exactly the kind of incentive, perhaps, that needs to jumpstart the recycling of these products. Now, some companies know the score. For instance, Hewlett Packard runs its own in-house recycling center. But millions of waste electronics may still end as junk. Yesterday's gigabytes just don't meet today's demands. What's truly amazing to me is you can get into a car that's 20 years old and the design will look a little different, but you'll put a key in, you'll start it, you'll put it in drive and you'll go, just mm -hmm. like you would a new car. And yet you have something here that looks, uh, it looks almost exactly like a computer of today when you look inside of it, and yet no one wants to reuse this. Well, if I had a magic wand, I would hope that they could actually make a computer that could be refurbished and could be reused forever. I would hope that the stuff wouldn't go into dumps and wouldn't pollute the water and pollute the air. Uh, and I would hope that everybody had uh, the piece of equipment that they needed to do the work that they do, whether it's on a desk or in a school.